There you are. Come on, big boy. Blaster. Yeah. Boats over with dudes, dudettes. Check it out. We're over here at Wild Florida again. Today's a little special because Andrew asked me to do him a favor. I had to pick up an animal from him from down south where I live. It was much easier for me to do that than for him to drive three and a half hours down south at the time because it was kind of a rush situation. So I went and did that for him. Now we're over here. I've already dropped off a lizard. We're going to go in the back with Crusher and we're going to continue our series with the expert level reptile. And Crusher is that expert level reptile. We're going to explain all of that. So we're going to let Andrew do his thing. We're going to let him show you what you, you know, the basic shit that happens here with Crusher over here at Wild Florida. And then I'm going to explain why it is an extreme way at the top of the list of expert level care of reptiles. So here's part two of the series and we're going straight from beginning to expert level reptiles. So I hope you guys enjoy. Boom. All right. Dudes, dudettes, we're back here at Wild Florida with my big homie over here, Andrew. Oh, let me squat down and try and make sure none of the holes in my pants are exposing anything that we can't show at Wild Florida. All right, so we got, uh, look at this beautiful shit going on in the background, guys. It's wonderful. <laughs> Dude, it's hot today. It's like an episode of uh, MTV. Just float back there just for one more second. I just want to get a little bit more of this action going on here. That's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this is going on YouTube for sure. Uh, Absolutely, 100%. Stay in school, kids. <laughs> yeah, just stay in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I didn't learn enough to know this is bad. So. <laughs> I just got here, all, all of them end up losing papers. <laughs> all right, That's so we got Daniel, right? we got Peter, and then we got Andrew. I'm surprised we only have one Andrew this time. Actually, shocking. And then we got Big Crusher in front of us. Now this is gonna go tie into our series a little bit about basically expert level care of reptiles. So this is the largest native reptile that we have here in North America, if you're not counting the American crocodile way down south, but these guys range a whole entire state. And this is a pretty, like I would say, is Crusher the biggest like in Florida right now? Um, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard of one any, any larger for sure. So he's definitely in the top two, three, four, five alligators in the whole state, maybe even in the country. Because he's what, 14, right? Yeah, he's 14 and probably close to a thousand pounds. So the largest recorded alligator was way back when in about 1899. That was about 18 feet, weighed over 2,000 pounds. That was in Louisiana. They broke that record multiple times in the last couple of years, uh, around 18.9 feet, 18 point. 10, I think they were just under 19, but they're killing those alligators, so those are no longer alive. Crusher would be one of the largest living uh, alligators that we have here in the country. I think so. He's the largest one that I've seen, and he's actually a very sweet boy. So I'm going to let Andrew take over for a little bit and kind of show you what he does with Crusher here. Obviously, you see he's been waiting here patiently, and he's doing that for a reason because Andrew's trained him. These guys have all trained him to do this because they do a show. We're going to plug a little bit of that show in so you guys can see kind of the experience you would get coming here to Wild Florida. Now, he's going to hold right in place. He's going to give him a good piece of ham there. See what he ends up doing with that. 
holds right in place that any other animal would take advantage of that moment. Of course, here in the Peter. All right, so again, we're going to ask him to come over, come up, and hold. Holds right in place, just like that. Now, he's a little bit more excited than earlier. So. Place. <laughs> it's a reward to give it up for Crusher and Peter there. You needed a shower, bud. You needed a shower. Florida. But in a nutshell, I'm going to let Andrew take over and then I'm going to show you guys why this is an expert level care of reptile. Because remember, it is an alligator. It is 100% a reptile and it goes along with the series that we're doing. Take it over there, hot stuff. Yeah, so with Crusher, he's, uh, he's our largest alligator. And, and when we got him, he was a nuisance trapped alligator. Um, and we wanted to showcase alligators in different lights. So a lot of times, um, if you go to places, they'll have them, you know, just pile on top of each other, or they'll do alligator wrestling, things like that. And we wanted to kind of just differentiate ourselves a little bit from that. Um, so we started doing training. So we do a lot of conditioning, operate conditioning with them. Uh, and really just to showcase that these guys, even though they're very dangerous, they don't necessarily need to be feared, but more respected. So if you give them respect, um, then, then they're gonna, you know, you can kind of work around them safely. So we started doing the training. So he's cute to come over. He opens his mouth open really wide. He holds still, and then he gets his reward. Now, one of the main goals behind the training is just to take better care of the animal. So by coming in here, we can observe him every single day. Crusher here, here. Crusher, come up. Come up. Uh, right there. So we can kind of give him a good overall health. We can even check his teeth, check his nostrils, work all the way down to his eyes. All just by working hands on with him more closely. So he's become used to this training. So he knows that if he holds still and does what we want, then he gets food. Boom! Did you guys hear that? That right there is one powerful jaw pressure. So there's a lot of debate here. We're talking about probably the second most powerful in the entire animal community. And I'm gonna have Andrew pop him up one more time. And you can see too, he's focused on Andrew. I just moved around the side of Andrew and basically me thinking the way that I do, I think that he's gonna focus on me and stop with what Andrew's doing. But they've trained him so well that he doesn't care what I'm doing. He's literally focused on Andrew and that food. And I'll show you guys one thing really cool right here. You can see this little nugget right here, this little nugget tube right here is all broken up. No fear that thing's gonna pop out. It's like an ice cream cone. There's another one that's gonna fill in right behind it. These guys lose over 3,000 teeth in a lifetime. There's so you see one grown in. So. so they're constantly losing teeth. Uh, it's not painful for them. They just pop out. Another one's replaced right after that. Uh, but it, like Andrew said, it's a good way for them to be able to keep the health on the animal as well as display the animal in a way where people can kind of lose the fear but also keep the respect for what could possibly go wrong. As you guys know, from the bite video that we did and this is where master blaster was dropped off so this is very like way larger than master blaster he could cause a lot more damage than master blaster could not that master blaster can't cause a lot of damage as we all know but he's very extremely well behaved so i'm gonna let andrew get back into it show you guys a couple more things that they do so yeah even like even with them in the water you know he's focused on us he knows that that we're the ones that are doing it so peter you want to grab his tail? Yep. So like even to do a mimic blood draw, so every day we do two shows a day, twice a day, um, we replicate like a blood draw. So if we had to give, even if we had to give him any kind of medication or draw blood, we would do it in the tail. So we desensitize him to that. So Peter can lift up his tail. He can poke and prod around his tail. Push it here. Come up. Come here. All right there, hold still and ask him to hold still. So most of the time, if you were going to do any kind of work with an alligator like this, oh, no, you're not going to listen. Sorry. I'm trying to be extra annoying since you <laughs> have food right there. Cool. Um, you would have to catch and restrain the animal, but by asking him to hold still, we're able to kind of do a lot of this stuff without having to actually catch and restrain him. All right, I'll give you a little reward. Good boy. Ba and then to kind of appeal to the guests a little more, we, we put a little bit of an entertainment factor on it. So we do want to... Hey, big guy. Uncle Justin always teaches him bad shit. So we always want to kind of get people's attention. So the easiest way to get their attention is by doing things that are going to... Come here. Here. 
Yeah. 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 So the whole time we're doing this too, we're reading the animals. So as much as we say Crusher is well behaved, he's also an alligator. And we know that he's an alligator and he's always going to be one. So we're constantly reading his body posture. So I'm looking at his back legs, his front legs. He also has little tails that he does, like flaps his ears when he's, you know, extra excited or motivated. I'm looking for his back legs. To, if he tucks them in, then he could lunge forward. Um, if he's got them more spread out, then he's more in a relaxed posture. Good boy. Come here. I'm going to hop in with you because I got a mic with me. Right. Let me brace it with this first. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got our guy Brian over here, Mr. Uh, cameraman. So we don't have the mic. That's why you see this thing attached to me. And we do have Christian doing the show in the background. So hopefully you guys can hear everything. I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be able to hear everything just fine. But if you're going to complain in the comments, just understand it was, a, it was a mess up on my part. I forgot the equipment, but we got some extra, so we should be good. All right, jam it out, bud. Yep. So just by working with him every day, we're getting him used to it. Um, but the whole time we're keeping in mind that he's an alligator, he's always gonna be one. So we always kind of treat him with that respect. We never want to get too comfortable with him because at any point he could, could show us just what he is and you know have a bad day. And, and so we always want to be extra safe. Good boy. Everybody here has all their fingers and toes and appendages. It's amazing. Come here. I don't have that. I'll see if you'll posture up nice and big on the ramp here. Here, let me, I'll walk up with you. Now, I'm an extra variable, because he don't know me from shit from Shinola. He does really good. You guys really have to understand, like, as much as, just like Andrew said, like we hold a deep respect for what the alligator can do. As sweet as Crusher may seem, he still is an alligator. And it's very important to say that because at any point in time, he can do exactly what he was born and bred to do. As you guys have seen multiple times with me, uh, and which is why we've backed away from more of the traditional seminal shows. Also, the parks have closed down. There's not much of that going on. I prefer this aspect of it. It's a lot more fun for me to do the training. It's a lot of hard work believe it or not, to jump on the back of an alligator and do a show like that, as fun as it used to be, now it's just a lot of hard work. But doing stuff like this, to me, is a lot more fulfilling because you're working with an animal. Number one, Crusher wasn't like this when you got him out. No. Like, he was a beast in that pond back there. He would beat everybody up, but they also noticed that he was one that was willing to work. So Andrew brought him out here, and you were the first one that started all this. Yep. So Andrew started working with Crusher, and he just noticed that he had a little bit of something extra than any of the other alligators in the pond. Also, he's huge, he's massive, he's gorgeous. And then to be able to get him from what he was to what he is now is absolutely incredible. But it takes a lot of work, a lot of consistency, and that goes into my expert level care of reptiles for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is an extremely dangerous animal at any point in time no matter how well behaved he is there is a chance that one of these guys don't go home at night and that is 100 percent true that's not a joke that's why they're as careful as they are that's why they do the work that they do that's why they do all this conditioning but they still also like andrew said no matter how good the animal is they still hold the respect for what the animal can do listen to the jaw pops if you're trapped in that mouth and crusher decides he doesn't want to let go i don't care if me peter dan and everybody else in this park try to open that mouth you're not opening that mouth for nothing like he's going to keep that closed and he's either taking whatever he put in his mouth from you or deciding to release it whenever he wants to so to hold that respect is absolutely necessary another reason why this would be an expert level animal to care for is obviously look at the size of this thing and granted crusher is a very large alligator you're talking about 14 feet but every alligator has the potential to get this big or bigger so you have to be able to provide the space for it they have them in this pond for the shows but if you look behind you quick look behind you there's a big long pond back there how many alligators do you think are back there uh, 60. probably 60. yeah damn that's really spread out so you have about 60 alligators, a couple of crocodiles within that pit themselves, but it's not overpacked, it's not overstocked. None of the ponds here at Wild Florida are overstocked, so they don't have any of the issues with beating anybody up. It is breeding season, so you're gonna see a couple of nicks and things here and there, but it's not as serious as if you have an overstocked pond. So 
in order to keep an animal like this and do it right and have it in a healthy condition, number one, they need the natural sunlight. So to keep them indoors for an entire lifetime, yeah. eh, it's not really a possible thing. We do raise them indoors. We'll raise the babies indoors and at a certain time, we want that sunlight because it promotes good health and good growth. Didn't you guys get some animals that were indoor grown like oh, yeah. their whole life? Yep. Yeah, they look super wonky. <laughs> yeah. And so when you get them from like indoor facilities from up north when it's cold, which is not a bad thing. Some zoos take really good care, but it does get too cold up north for these guys. So they got to bring them indoors. A lot of them are kept indoors their whole entire life. Then they come here to wild Florida or somewhere in Florida or somewhere where they can get the sunlight and they grow exponentially. They grow very quickly because they're getting that natural sunlight, which they absolutely need. I mean, look at the osteoderms on the back that's built to get the sunlight they need to be able to create the energy they need to survive so number one the sheer space that you need and like if you look at this enclosure here and this is just for crusher just for crusher and then how much money do you think would go into something like this oh at least fifteen thousand. so you're talking about 15k just for the enclosure that doesn't count the animal a lot of people will think okay i'm gonna buy an animal and that's where it ends but it doesn't you can buy the animal that's the beginning of it then you have to have the enclosure then you have to continue to upgrade the enclosure because they're going to have to fix things they're going to have to keep up with things and then if you have an emergency with the animal what do you do gotta go, to the vet. gotta go to the vet and a lot of people overlook that as well even alligators i mean i would say out of anything in the park here alligators and crocodiles probably see the let the the vet the least just because of their overall ability and immune system which is like bar none for any animal but they still do have issues we still do have to bring them to the vet so if there is an emergency you got to bring it to the vet so it's not just the cost of the animal it's the cost of everything that comes afterwards the cost of the animal is actually the cheapest part of any animal that you're ever going to get which is why i would say 100 percent the american alligator is absolutely 100 percent an expert level care of reptile going from all the way from husbandry to what they need, vet care, and then obviously being able to know what to do to get something like this. And even Andrew understands, as you said, like he's a wonderful alligator. Oh, yeah. But if you put your hand in his mouth right now and touch his tongue, what happens? He's gonna bite me. Yeah. <laughs> so like he's still an alligator at the end of the day. Yeah. You got some more cool shit you wanna show us here with the big boy here? No, I mean, that's most of the training wheels. We bring them around. I mean, we always can always do things like hold them really still. Give me a big kiss. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, he's got some slamming jaws. Oh, yeah. So in the wintertime, you don't get that. In the wintertime, they get a little bit more slowed down. And watch, he's, now he's paying attention to me. And he's going to behave for Andrew. Here. That's okay. a good boy. That's a good boy right there. So he's behaving for Andrew, but you saw he locked in on me, but he's not locking in on me in any aggression. I'm paying attention to his back feet. Again, his eyes, front feet, everything else like that, the posture, he's just checking me out. But again, like this takes a lot of work. So these guys have done, how long has it been now? Probably uh, four years, Yeah. four years, about yep. four years. So he spent about four years with Crusher and all these guys behind have spent a lot of time with Crusher to get him to where he is now. And where he is now is a wonderful place. But again, you have to respect the animal for what he is because Give him one more piece of food, see if you can get him to slam those jaws shut one more time. He won't do it now. Just because we asked for it. Uh, eh, it was a half stacker. And I'm sure you got, I'm sure they heard it for the, for the most part, but you got solid 2,000 pounds of pressure in there. If you get stuck in there, you're not coming out. It's going to be massive amounts of problems. But all in all, Crush is a really good boy. Very impressive animal. Can you get, a, can you, can you, can you get on his back? Or does he not? Um, you do that. No, no. You don't work on it? No. Can you get behind his tail? Yeah. Get behind his tail real quick. Do you want to get behind his tail? You can move his tail. I can, yeah, sure. I just want to show the, the size. Oh. All right, so I'm a pretty big dude. I'm going to get behind him. And I don't care how bad me and Andrew wanted to, there is no way in hell that we would ever be able to high five over the top of this alligator. He's that big. So you're talking about a 14 foot alligator. Honestly, this is the largest one that I've seen in, at least in the state. The only thing that I would think is comparable is, is grandpa over there. But even then, I don't think he's got the length. I think he may have the girth, but I don't think he has the length. Is any of them in there anywhere close? Uh, not that close. I mean, we have some of the long, but the thing with him too is he's, he's extra long, but he's in pretty good shape too. Starting to bulk out. So that's the thing with these alligators too, is that what pe most people don't realize is 
you know, they grow about a foot a year every year until they hit six feet for that first six years. Once that six year mark hits and they hit sexual maturity, the growth slows down tremendously, but they do grow for their entire lives. That could be an inch or two, a couple of centimeters every year for the rest of their life. So once they get a certain age, like Crusher is probably, I'm gonna guess, at least 40 to 60 years old, somewhere around there. Would you say that's a safe bet? Yeah, that's what we estimate. Yeah, so I'm gonna say about 40 to 60 years, and what starts to happen is then you start to see a very bulky head. So he's still gonna get longer as time goes. Like he has the potential to be a record alligator. He has the potential to go all the way to 18 feet. And he has the potential to get a much, like, what do you call him? Like a thousand pounds right now? 800 to thousand? Yeah, 850 to a thousand. I would say, yeah, he's like, dude, I mean, if I was gonna, I'm not gonna do it. So, but if I was to sit on top of him, it, even for me as tall as I am, it's gonna be hard for me to get my legs around him and sit on the floor. So for him, he's just got so much more room to grow and then you have to understand that. And this animal's gonna live for another, as long as everything goes well and everything is going extremely well, it's extremely healthy. There's a little bit of posturing right there. But if all goes extremely well, this dude could go another 40, 50 years, 60 years and be perfectly fine and continue to grow. So he could hit some record lengths. So I'm interested to see what happens with Crusher here in the future. I always love coming over here just to hang out with Andrew. I'm gonna sneak back over towards Andrew slowly keep this guy focused on Andrew and he does really well like me splashing around in the water like this any other alligator is gonna gun right towards me or either run away one of the two usually it'll be run away one big one like this will come towards me but that is per usual I love coming out to wild Florida we did come out here to bring mr. Andrew here a lizard which we're gonna show you a picture of because we're gonna get into that lizard later on so I'm gonna go back with Andrew oh there's a good pop that's a good pop right there so we're gonna go back with Andrew, back over to the truck. I'm gonna show you guys a very cool lizard that we're gonna be doing on the next episode or one of the next episodes in this series. But this is a great example of expert level care of a reptile with some expert level keepers doing the job that not a lot of people can do out here. So if you do get the chance, like I said, dudes, go to Wild Florida, all the links in the description. So we're gonna have Daniel, we're gonna have Peter, we're gonna have Christian, we're gonna have Andrew, and of course, Wild Florida, all the hyperlinks below. Go check them out on Instagram, go check out the website. And then again, they do crusher shows every day. They do wildlife shows every day. There's encounters all the time. And then you have the safari that you guys have seen before. If you haven't seen this before, go to my other episodes with Wild Florida. We got training with crocodiles. We got the safari. We got all kinds of stuff. But again, dudes, thank you very much for hanging out. Go check everybody out on the Instagram and on the page and come visit Wild Florida when you get a chance. Boom.